We asked super producer David Henschel what the difference was when he was an engineer for nursery crime in 1971 to 1976 when he came back to Genesis, this time as a producer. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. In that five-year gap, yeah, he went from engineer to being a producer. And not only that, being the producer for the first Phil Collins lead singer album, A Trick of the Tale. One thing he did tell us back in 1971, there certainly were two people who were in charge of that band. You may not be surprised by this. He confirmed what a lot of people already knew. Well, you worked with, like on Nursery Crime, you worked with Genesis earlier on with Pete in the band. I mean, what was, besides obviously budget would have been a big thing because by the time uh, with uh, Trick of the Tail, but what was the difference between, was there a major difference? I mean, you were a different person when you were working earlier with Genesis as you were when you started with Phil singing. What was the difference for you going, having those two experiences with, with working with the two different versions of Genesis? How do you going back to um, um, nursery crime? Yeah. That sort of time, do you mean? Yeah. Well, that, that was purely an engineering gig for me. And it was one of the first albums I actually recorded from start to finish, actually. Um, we're going back to those Trident days. We used to do a lot of, they were um, at Charisma, there was a label called Charisma. Yeah. And Genesis was signed to Charisma, and I'd, I'd done a lot of work with Gus actually, with with other people, with other bands, Charisma bands, or with the bank called Audience, Fandograph Generator, so were pretty obscure but amazing sort of prog band. So were Audience. I mean, I know Gus produced, and you were uh, was it Lunch the album that you worked on? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the, they were a very distinctive, especially I forget the lead singer's name. You obviously know, but. Uh, he had a very distinctive uh, sound. Howard, um, I can't remember. Worth, it was worth, is it worth? His voice was unbelievable. Yeah. I've never heard in my life, in now, anyone sing as loudly as that guy did. Yeah. And it was like he had a PA in his chest. You know, it was absolutely extraordinary. Yeah. And it, I mean, it was, it was actually to, to the point where it was difficult to record because you had to be very careful with your microphone technique and all the rest of it. And, it was very easy to get it distorted, so it, it was a challenge. But um, so the Genesis gig for me, um, that that um, uh, nursery crime really was an engineering gig, and it was we, we started recording on eight track, and eventually bumped it up to sixteen when we got our first sixteen track machine mm -hmm. because it, it was that long ago. Um, so I really didn't have much in uh, creative input rather than. Uh, you know, beyond just throwing in the odd idea when John Anton Anti was the producer on that. And he would, um, you know, he was always very open to suggestions from anyone in the room, basically. And, you know, I would put in my two pennies worth, if, you know, if required. Um, but it was, uh, it, it, I suppose, because it was really early in my career, it was quite a learning experience for me too. To, to, they were probably the first, they were certainly the first prog band I'd worked with. And um, I was certainly aware of them. I'd been to their gigs, I'd seen Peter at the gigs and all the rest of it. And that, that was, you know, a, a big learning experience. And it was, it was great fun. It was, it, was all, it was the difference between that and the later ones probably was the dynamic. Um, the, there was a certain degree of friction between Peter and Tony, I guess, predominantly, um, because they're quite, they're both very strong characters, as we all know. Um, and as much as Genesis always prided themselves on being a democratic um, outfit, there were, there were definitely two people in charge, certainly in those days. Um, so there was, there was some friction there. Um, and that, you know, I got to see all that and then I got to learn from that and how to manage people in the studios. It's all man management, really. A lot of pro record production is, is how to coax the best out of people, how to create a, a happy, fruit, um, fruitful environment that's conducive to producing where everyone feels relaxed, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, I, I learned all that kind of it. So when I got to the trick of the tail from then onwards, because I was producing then, co-producing, um, I was much more aware of all that kind of stuff. There was there was actually less friction in the band, really. Certainly on Trick of the Tail. Um, obviously, the other things came along as the albums went on, with Steve being sort of slightly less happy or comfortable or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that actually even didn't really appear in the studio, to be honest. He kept that pretty much to himself. 
In fact, it was a shock to us when he came in when we were mixing um, seconds out and said, uh, well, all right, actually, I don't think he even came into the studio. I think um, Phil or Tony came and said, oh, Steve's left the band. And it was like, oh, what? <laughs> We'll have more from David Henschel coming up next week. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. Keep buying our t-shirts. Thank you so much. It helps us pay our students who edit our videos. Links in the description of this video. This is Rocky Stream Music. Mm -hmm.